Hi guys and welcome back to The Family Fudge. Today I'm going to be sharing how we handle technology in our home and in our school. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite websites, products, but I'm also going to share with you some of the guidelines that we've set up to help keep our kids safe while they're online. So stay tuned. Okay, so before we get started, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Jennifer and I am the homeschool mom of four kids. Right now I have a third grader, a kindergartner, a preschooler, and then I have a toddler. I almost wanna say baby, but he's really not a baby anymore. He's definitely a toddler. But anyway, I like to categorize us as hybrid homeschoolers. So one day a week my kids attend a public school and the rest of the days they're at home with me. But they also do co-ops, PE classes, music classes, and Sunday school. So they're very social. Now over the last couple of weeks, I've shared a lot about how we approach homeschool. I've shared my homeschool room tour. I've shared you some of the curriculum that we're using. But I also mentioned that we do some of our work online. When it comes to technology in our home, I embrace it. Our kids are growing up in a technology-centered world, whether we like it or not. So I definitely want my kids to know how to use it, but also be safe about it. And I also believe it's important to keep a healthy balance between online school and hands-on learning activities. Now back when I was in school, we only had computer class once a week for one hour. And I only really remember playing one thing and that was Oregon Trail. But anyway, nowadays there are so many online schools, websites, apps that are available to kids, but not all are created equal. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the ones that I actually use. And then I'm gonna share with you some of our safety guidelines. So the first site that we love, that we've been using for years, is abcmouse.com. Now I'm going to guess that you've probably heard of them because I feel like they have a really aggressive marketing campaign because I've seen them advertise on buses, magazines, the doctor's office, uh, Disney Channel, all over. They do a lot of advertising, but we've actually been using them for years and we really like it. So basically, ABC Mouse is an early learning program and it's kind of geared for preschoolers through second graders. My kids think that they're just playing fun games because all of the activities are animated and engaging and they're actually really cute. But really what they're doing is following a full age-appropriate curriculum. Now I'm definitely not trying to sell you on abcmouse.com, but I will share with you my top three reasons why we like it. And number one is the learning path. So unlike other websites that kids can go on and just pick anything at random, ABC Mouse has an age appropriate or level appropriate learning path. So each of my kids has a separate account and I can set up their specific learning path. So with Lily, she's on a path that progressively gets harder, but it's all appropriate for her level of learning. And same with Jackson and Mackenzie. My next pro is the price. There's one flat fee for the year, and for that flat fee, you actually get several accounts. So for one membership, all of my kids can do it. I don't have to pay separately per child, which I really like. Now my next pro is the ability to have parental control while your kids are on abcmouse.com. So as a parent, I can go in and check things that I do want them to do, maybe X out things that I don't want them to do, which kind of brings me to the negative or the cons with ABC Mouse. Now, ABC Mouse is set up as a ticket system. So think about, you go to Chuck E. Cheese, you do an activity, you get tickets, you can take those tickets for prizes. And ABC Mouse is pretty much the same way. So they do a learning activity, and depending on what activity it is, they get tickets. And then they can take those tickets and go shopping. Now in the shopping category, they can buy things for their bedroom, they can buy clothes, they can buy toys for their avatar to use. But what I find is that my kids only wanna go shopping. It's like not real shopping, but for me, it's not the point of learning to, to get tickets to go shopping. So I don't really like the aspect of the shopping, although my kids love it. But you can definitely turn that off if you don't want your kids to do that. Oh yes, and something to note is that you can actually do abcmouse.com on your phone or on your tablet. So it's definitely portable. 
Definitely a positive. Now the next site that we've been using for years and we really like is Starfall.com. Now just like ABC Mouse, Starfall offers activities for kids in preschool through about second or third grade. And it mostly focuses on language arts and math. Now one of the interesting things about Starfall is that you can actually use quite a bit of the website for free, for absolutely free. Um, but if you do want the complete um, website, everything on the website, there is a membership. But it's half the cost of abcmouse.com. It's only about $30. All of my kids can use it. And it's actually a really good deal. But on the other hand, unlike abcmouse.com, Starfall for the regular membership does not include a learning path. So sometimes I'll find my preschooler trying to work on third grade math and she's frustrated that she can't figure it out. That's not fun. But overall, we're really happy with Starfall. I think the price is good, the lessons are really fun and engaging, and you can do it on the app, so you can take it with you. Now this brings me to my next favorite, which is timeforlearning.com. And unlike ABC Mouse and Starfall, which I think are just for fun, that are supplements to a curriculum, timeforlearning.com is like a legitimate curriculum. And if you wanted to, you could make it everything, like you wouldn't have to supplement at all. Now let's talk pros and cons to Time for Learning. Now just like ABC Mouse and Starfall, Time for Learning also offers animated interactive lessons, which are really fun, especially for kids that don't like dry, boring textbooks or workbooks. But unlike ABC Mouse and Starfall, Time for Learning actually expects the kids to take quizzes and tests and they actually really have to understand the lesson before they can move on to the next one. It's like a real curriculum. Now a con to Time for Learning can definitely be the price, especially if you still plan on supplementing with other materials. I believe it starts at $19.99 per month. Now, if you add additional students, they do give you a little bit of a discount. I believe it's $14.99 for every additional student, but that's per month, which could be good if that's all you're using. But like I said, if you're using other things, we usually supplement with novels and art and um, extracurricular things um, as well. So it kind of gets expensive to pay that every month, especially if you have three students. Now back to the pro category, one of the things that I really like about Time for Learning is that it makes my life as the homeschool teacher really easy because you can use it for lesson plannings. They will tell you exactly how many lessons you need to do to be finished um, in a year. Um, you can take attendance, it can keep track of their test scores. So if you're having to turn those things into the state, it makes it really easy to keep track of their work. And it makes the lesson plans, like I said, that's a huge thing. Making lesson plans for homeschool can take a lot of time and they will do all the work for you. So for the $19.99, I guess it might be worth it to have that done for you. Now before I move on and share with you the products that we use and some of our safety guidelines, I do have an honorable mention. If you're looking for a good online curriculum for your kids, but you don't necessarily want to pay for ABC Mouse or Time for Learning, definitely check out Easy Peasy Online Homeschool. We used it a little while back and it was really good, but I really preferred Time for Learning and ABC Mouse, but it is a close second, so definitely check that out. So very quickly, I'll go ahead and show you the computers that we're using this year. All of our kids are using the Asus Chromebook, which we found on Amazon. And I'll go ahead and link it down below if I can remember, but we actually really like these ones because of their rugged design. Now these are a little bit sturdier for kids to use. These computers have reinforced rubber guards, which is really great for the accidental drop but it also has easy grip handles and a spill resistant keyboard. Also, the screen rotates all the way back, so you don't have to worry about the kids opening it too far. It's okay if they do that. Now because these are Chromebooks, we're kind of limited on what the kids can do with them. They can't put any discs in there whatsoever, which I actually kind of like. So there's no movies, no games on here, other than their curriculum and the websites that are pre-approved. Okay, so now I'm going to share six guidelines or tips that we use to keep our kids safe online. And keep in mind that my kids are still relatively young, so if you have a teenager, this might be a little bit different, but 
Here are my six guidelines. Number one, we only allow the kids to use their computer in public spaces, so not in their bedrooms, not where mom and dad can't monitor what they're doing. They have to be in the schoolroom or in the same room with mom or dad so we can know what's going on. Now this also helps us keep track of how long they're using their computer because just like any screen time, too much can be a bad thing. I know with my kids, I can definitely tell that their attitude is different if they've had too much screen time. So definitely we keep that limited. Now my next tip is to make sure that the kids are only using apps and websites that are age appropriate. And one of the things that you can do is go on commonsensemedia.com. It's a free website and service. You can plug in any website or game or app that's available to kids and it'll give you sort of a rating. Um, it can tell you what's good about it, what's bad about it, things to consider before you let your kids actually use that app or that website. So my third tip is to set strict boundaries on times that they can use the technology. So for my kids, they do use it for school, um, but they're not allowed to use it anytime after school until number one, all of their chores are done, and number two, more importantly, all of their schoolwork is done. So they cannot play on the computer at all until those two things are completed. Now my next step is to utilize the parental control portal. My husband and I have set it up on these computers that the kids can't even get to websites that aren't pre-approved. So basically on their computers, they only have three websites right now. And it's not YouTube at all. They only have ABC Mouse, Starfall, and time for learning. And occasionally we'll let them go on pbskids.org, um, which is a good one as well, but I found that my kids wanted to spend all of their time there, and so we've had to limit the access to that one. So they have to ask for approval to, get to, to even get to other websites. Now my next tip is all about safeguarding the kids against hackers. Did you guys know that one of the easiest ways to tell you've been hacked is if you see your webcam light blinking. If that's blinking, that's bad. If it's blinking on its own, that's bad because that means that somebody could be watching you or your child through the webcam. But I have something that to safeguard against that. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is a webcam lens cover. It was sent to me by a company called Zooms. It's basically just like a little sticker. You can put it on there. You could easily take it off if you'd like to, but you can slide it open if you want to use your webcam, or you can slide it closed and keep it closed. These webcam covers are really inexpensive and a really good way to protect yourself against hackers. If you want any more information, I'll go ahead and leave a link down below. Okay, so my last tip is a really good website to use to help educate your kids about online safety. And this is called Cyber5. Cyber5 is a short animation which introduces children to five helpful rules to be safer on the internet. It includes things like not sharing passwords, not sharing your full name and address, what they should do about pop-up ads, getting permission to download things, and how to deal with cyber bullies. This is a free lesson and I can't recommend it enough. All of my kids have watched it. Um, they had a lot of questions. We were able to talk about it. So they know that these rules are also my rules, that they're not allowed to do any of these things. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any additional questions, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.